A month or so ago, I released a couple of videos about Total War Troy and its battles. Some people were interested and excited, others, not so much. In this video, we're going to take a look at the campaign. Instead, I'll give you a brief overview of what's going on with it. We'll play a few turns, play a few battles, and you can see what it's all about. I'll also give you my personal opinion on Total War Troy and what I really think of it. So the faction we're going to look at is Menelaus and Sparta. Now there are eight different factions in Total War Troy, so this is another one of them. We saw two of them in the previous battle videos that I did. And your faction is led by an epic hero, a prominent figure who leads the faction. And everything kind of revolves around them. Much like in Warhammer, you have your legendary lords. Now I'm going to skim through all these tooltips. Feel free to pause the video and read them if you wish. So yeah, you have your epic hero who brings a certain playstyle, all the faction leaders are different, but now with the new skill point system, you can customize them to fit a certain role more, because now you're hit with branching choices. If you choose one side, you can't choose the other and it'll get cancelled out and you won't ever be able to take it. So you have to think about how you want to use your hero on the battlefield and what traits are going to be useful to that end. I personally really like this change, I think it's good that you have to make choices rather than just adding on always to your hero, making them more and more powerful until they become unstoppable. So that's roughly how the heroes and generals work. Now to the campaign map itself, where we've got a fairly big change to resources. Normally we only have one, well now we've got five. Five different resources to manage, all with their different uses for different things. Of course, normally we only really have one currency, which is typically gold, but now we've got gold, bronze, stone, wood, and food to worry about. So we need to get an income of all these things per turn, whether that be through buildings or through trade, and different materials will be used for different things. In building, for example, certain buildings will require certain resources. So you can see on the left-hand card there at the top, resource cost 20 gold, 340 wood. That's what I need to make that building. If I want to make this one instead, it's bronze and wood that I'm going to need. If I want to make this one, it's wood and food. So you get the idea. Different materials for different things. When it comes to buildings, when it comes to units sometimes, there's different uses for all the different resources that you have. So a bit of a change there. More resources to manage, more to get a hold of. It still feels very natural though. It doesn't feel too difficult to get anything. So it's a nice change, I think. Now to victory conditions, you've got the Homeric victory and the Total War victory. Do you want to follow the story or do you just want to smash everyone, basically? Then we have the Royal Decrees, which is just our technology tree, similar to any other Total War. They follow the five different materials that we have. So as you progress through these, you'll be improving your economy. On to Diplomacy then. So Diplomacy has a few changes, very similar to Warhammer overall with its looks and feel. There's a few things that have been taken from Three Kingdoms though, which are really nice. So the first slight difference though is going to be in trade, where you don't get kind of infinite trade, I don't think, as you do before. You now have barter agreements, which can last up to 10 turns. You can use this slider to determine that yourself, and you can trade certain materials. So if I'm striking up a deal with these Arcadians, at the bottom here I can see what they need and what they don't need. The red icon indicates what they have plenty of and that they're not interested in. The green icon shows what they need. You can see they've got no bronze, so they're definitely going to want to trade me for some bronze. I've got a fair bit of bronze at the moment, I've got a thousand. So I'll offer them a hundred bronze for ten turns in return for what am I a bit short of? Maybe some food. My food is a little bit minus, so I'll take maybe, see if I can get 500 food. They're happy with that. You can see it actually tells you what you're going to get now, so you don't have to faff around too much. See if I can push it a little bit more. You can see the green number in the middle is changing as I change these values. So 700 is too much. Maybe 650. 650 looks good. I'll get that for sure. So we'll go ahead with that. A mutually beneficial transaction. So that's a nice thing that's been carried over from Three I Kingdoms. Agree. The ability to see what effects that your offer is having rather than having to just keep trying and failing until you get one that works. All the other buttons in Diplomacy, pretty much the usual stuff for Total War. You can region trade in this as well like you could in Three Kingdoms and some other previous Total Wars. So that's a nice touch. Overall, your usual Total War Diplomacy, to be honest, nothing too special or new here. We do have Quick Deal as well, another thing carried over from Three Kingdoms, so nice to see them making use of some of the strong elements of the Three Kingdoms campaigns, some useful tools to kind of streamline the experience. Next we have Divine Will, so this is your favour with all the different gods of the mythology. And they'll go through four levels, neglected, respected, celebrated, and worshipped. So the more you celebrate these gods, any particular god, the more they'll rise up. You can see Ares here is a little bit above the rest. He's respected because I've constructed this altar of Ares. So he's pretty happy about that, gains me 100 favor with him. 
So the more I worship a certain god, the more they'll rise up through the levels and give me better benefits. Feel free to pause the screen again if you want to read all the benefits and things. You also have the prayer where you can pray to your gods and they'll give you certain boons in return. You can also potentially gain favor with a god quickly with a hecatomb, which is just a small sacrifice to your chosen god. So you can choose whichever god you like, favor whichever one you wish, and they will give you different benefits. Of course, you can choose the one which best fits your playstyle and what you're trying to do. These can also affect battle as well and give you bonuses in battle if you favor a certain god. Now to some campaign specific things, Call to Arms. This is for Menelaus only, this is one of his things. Quite simply, it allows you to recruit units from friendly factions. So if they've got a type of unit that you don't have, if they've got a good swordsman unit that you'd like, Menelaus will be able to grab them. So that's one of his unique traits to his army and his faction. And his other unique mechanic is Spartan Colonies. This allows him to go and colonize raised settlements without actually having to go there. Normally, if you want to take a settlement, you have to send an army there, right, and colonize it. Well, not for Menelaus. I did it with this place here, Melos. I literally just clicked it, paid the resources that I needed to, and boom, it was mine. Simple as that. Obviously, there's a limit to this. You can't just go crazy and take everything, but it's a nice touch. You can get stuff without actually having to send an army all the way over there. Now, for settlements themselves, again, it's all very familiar. It's all what you already know. If you've played a Total War before, you know how building chains work and all that stuff. It's very much the same sort of deal. Of course, it focuses around those five resources, your favor to the gods, recruiting new units. We have the garrisons of all the settlements, building browser, usual stuff here. Again, all very similar to Warhammer especially. We have our hero or general recruitment here. You get different kinds of general, warlord, commander, defender, veteran, fighter, ravager, fighter, champion. All these different types for different kinds of roles in the army. You've got your different agents, spies, priestess, epic agent and envoys. I'm not going to go through everything they all do, but it's again very similar to previous Total Wars. Spies do different things, priestesses do different things. They have different roles to play, different goals to achieve to assist your kingdom. And I suppose the last thing to talk about is the visuals, the campaign map itself. I personally think it looks pretty fantastic. The water looks great. I really like the sky, the cartoon kind of sky. It reminds me of that uh, Disney Hercules movie I watched when I was a kid many a time. Shout out to those who remember that film. But yeah, the colors are really nice. Mountains and trees and greenery look good. So yeah, really impressed with the map design. I'm a fan of the UI as well, the coloring of the UI and things. The map itself is pretty damn huge. Not sure how it compares to other Total War games. It doesn't look as big as some other Total War games, but that's not really a downside. You don't necessarily need a huge map. I think Troy and stuff starts over here somewhere. So you've got a fair old trek ahead of you if you do want to go and try for that story victory and taking out Troy. But yeah, there we go. There's an overview of most of the mechanics and elements of the Total War Troy campaign. So onto a few turns of my Menelaus campaign. Allow me to set the scene for you. I've just taken this entire province, this is where I started. I started with two or three settlements, came down, took this little extra one here, so I've got the whole province now. And to my north, there's mostly friendlies, the Arcadians are up here, so all these factions I don't really need to worry about. Down south though is where the problems are. This little faction down here that controls this part of this island, they recently declared war on me and sent a big army over the seas to this little settlement which I'd captured. I managed to fend them off. They had a lot of archers to be honest, so I just brought loads of cheap infantry and just overran them with numbers. That's why I've got all the crappy units in this army. But I've come over the seas now to start taking their settlement. So we're ready to go. I've got a spy here. You can see a bit of information about him on the left there. We've got murmurs of sedition, which will cause attrition to the garrison army. I think I already did it though. Or maybe I'm not quite close enough. Either way, it doesn't really matter. We've got a lot more numbers than them. We'll go ahead and fight this so you can see what a settlement battle looks like. You can see we've got the favor of the gods here. I've got Ares who gives plus 40% morale to sword and axe units. So a nice little bonus to help us on our way. And I wonder actually if enemy factions also get those god buffs as well. I wonder. I assume they would because they're going to favor gods themselves. Okay, Menelaus and the boys are pretty much ready. We've deployed... I'm coming with a little bit of a cheeky sneaky tactic plan. Got these axemen and most of my units are all together here in this one force and they're all going to charge forward up the hill. But I've got all my cheapy crappy units coming in from the left hand side, all these boys. They're going to kind of provide a distraction just to try and tie things up and to overwhelm one side while we smash our way through with the main force. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. You can see the settlement, lots of rock formations and buildings mixed in. Not a lot of buildings themselves, like in previous Total Wars, of course, this is the Bronze Age, so it's not that advanced. But there is lots of kind of narrow passages and things to kind of get tactical with, some choke points. I kind of like it. I do miss a good old minor settlement battle. I think Attila actually had some of the better minor settlement battles overall. 
Room 2 was great as well, but Attila for some reason stands out for its minor settlements to me. Uh, coming in from the left with my little flanking party of basically peasants. Bringing the big boys up the hill. They don't have too many units up here, so hopefully we can break through them. I am having some army movement issues right now. Glad to see that bug's still a thing, where my army is off in a random position. Come on. Oh dear. I'm trying to alt drag my army around, but it's not positioning them at my cursor. It's positioning them God knows where, so it's not really working properly. I have to do individual orders. Nice one, Troy. Of course, do you remember? <laughs> this is uh, beta stuff. Some stuff will hopefully be fixed. Will it all be fixed before release? Ooh. Well, we'll talk about that at the end. Trying to execute my plan here. Coming in with my spearmen up front. I put the spears up front because they had shields and my axemen don't have shields. I didn't want them to get blasted, so... Sending in the spears first. Axes will bring up the rear. Let's check out this charge. Yeah, not bad, but not really... Didn't really feel like there was much impact. You can't really expect them to be as crazy and over the top as Warhammer, but... You want them to be a bit crunchy and like two men are charging at each other and running into each other with shields. That's how I think it should feel anyway. A bit more impactful. At the moment it just seems like men are kind of bumping into each other. Oh, sorry mate, didn't see you there. My fault, my mistake, my folly. Hopefully that's something that will improve anyway. Gonna bring in my axemen now. Get them into the fight. I'll probably pull these spears back so they can get a little bit closer. Got some of my slingers firing away. Pushing some axemen around this side. Everything's holding up okay. Enemy units yes. not breaking too quickly, which is cool. It'd be nice if battles wore on a little bit, which they seem to be. We're clogging up this side. Lots of units on that left side of their settlement. All we've got to do is break these bits, and we'll be able to break through, get behind them, and absolutely ruin their lives. They're holding up well, though. I'm not sure whether my units are just really slow at doing damage or whether battles have been made to last a bit longer now, which would be good if they did. Because they were a bit quick in the demo I played before. So if units do live a bit longer, I'm not going to complain. Seems like they're doing it so far. Let's get these back in there. Got a couple of slinger units to get behind. These are all a bit too bunched up for my liking. Good job there's no Pit of Shades or Comets of Cassandra or anything coming this way. Then we'd be screwed. Although maybe there is. Who knows? This is a slightly fantasy game, of course. Nearly breaking them on this side. At the expense of my Axemen, though. They've taken a fair old pound in. Should be getting through here soon. This unit's nearly broken. There is a general in there. Let's get these spearmen back. Try and get the axes a bit more forward. These boys still tanking all the damage over here. Causing all the distractions. Can it buy us enough time? Will they break? I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to break these quick enough. We've broken this side. Going to get a hold of these slingers, javelin men. Start to flank up on this side. Just need to break these lines. Come on, lads. Back in, back in. Our general should be beating the crap out of this general. Looks like he is. We're mostly pushing through. Come up. Let's try and get through there. Yeah, we can get through there now. They haven't quite routed, but we can push through them. There's not enough of them left to stop us. There we go, we've broken this unit. Let's push on to the center. Start to get after all those slinger units. This should be a glorious finish. If we can get to them before they wipe out all of our peasants on that left side. Should be all good. Menelaus is fine. He's beating the crap out of one of their generals. Getting a bit overrun on this side. Our slingers can help out, hopefully. Got another unit coming in, though. Should be fine now. Just got to press through to the middle. Obviously, we outnumbered them greatly, so we should be fine. They do have less units, but some better Your units than we do. We've got a lot of crappy heart. peasants, so our army isn't as big and tough as it might look. These ones over here won't last too long in most fights. It's only because there's so many of them that they're kind of lasting all right. Skaven slave mentality. And overall, I think I still do enjoy the Troy battles. In the previous videos I did for Troy, I said I enjoy the battles. They're your quite fun, and I still do think heart. that. They've got some really nice maps. I like the new terrain stuff. you have got lots of different no variety in the units and in the factions, which is quite rare sometimes with Total War historical titles. At least it was with Thrones Victory of Goddamn Boar Tanya. Although that taste. isn't always a problem necessarily. Shogun 2, most armies have the same units, but 
Somehow Shogun 2 just gets it right and does it well. There's enough difference between them with the special kind of units. But this is nice. I like the faction variety, the different focus of factions, well, much like Warhammer. Some are ranged factions, some are heavy factions, some are light factions, some are rush factions. There's difference between them, giving you reason to play them for different playstyles. But you're not limited totally. You can kind of mix them up and play a faction the way it shouldn't really be played, but it can still kind of work. There's that sort of fun element where you can mix around your playstyle and your approach to a battle. Now, we do have these new little scenes as well now. Little post-battle fights. A proper scene. They're pretty nice. But whether they'll get old after seeing them 50 times is another question. They are skippable though, so that's fine. Gonna go ahead and occupy this settlement. We've got all the usual options. Very good. Boom, we got our first place on this island. We'll hopefully push through and take the rest. Send our spy off this way on the next turn. We'll replenish a little bit. And then we'll be good to keep pushing through. And hopefully we'll meet some kind of resistance so we can have a bit of a battle somewhere. Not just push through taking these three settlements because that won't be much fun to watch. Let's see what happens. We'll push on to the next settlement. No army spotted yet. We've sent our spy off to have a little look around. We can take this settlement easy enough. Still got our favor of Eris. Let's auto resolve this one. Another fight scene ensues. I do like this. It's a nice little addition. A little quality of life stuff. Better than the usual little crappy battles that you watch. Got a proper scene. It's all blacked out. It's nice. I like it. Occupied this one. Two settlements down. Decisive victory. Just going to push through. Oh, here we go. We've got a little army here. <laughs> one unit. Surely there's more. It's a main city though, so it does have walls and it'll be a proper siege. We definitely need to replenish a bit. Which is going to give them time to build up somewhat of an army. So... We'll have to see. We can recruit some units here, though, so that's good. Let's get a couple of these. Maybe some spearmen. That'll do us, I think. That'll do us for now. We'll try and overrun that city, take it off them, expand our empire. Got a few things to upgrade back here. We shall do so. Let's level up this town. Trying to be kind of cautious of my resources, especially in a time of war. I've got minus bronze, so I need to kind of sort that out. I've got a good bit to last me a while though, so as long as I don't use up all my bronze, I'll be okay. Happiness is fine here. So it's all the usual total war stuff. There's religions and things to worry about, influence as it's called, or like corruption in Warhammer. So you've got to try and control that, your happiness or your public order, all the usual total war bits. Nothing too different here. If you've played any Total War before, you'll kind of know how this works. Got a barter agreement for some wood? No, thank you, sir. I am less than All my enemies, what do they want with me, I wonder? Peace for a tiny little bit of gold? You must be joking, sir. No, thank you. You will die today, or within the next few months. They got two settlements left. This one is mostly undefended. Little spy out here. I don't think I'm quite ready to attack. Let's see if they got anything over here. Got a four unit army now. They're building themselves up a little bit. They're preparing. We'll keep healing our peasants up. I'm gonna I could attack now and just take the settlement, to be honest, but I want to try and get a nice big battle to show you. So hopefully they'll keep building up an army and they'll bring it to this settlement. And we can try and capture it from them with a decent battle. And they have indeed brought an 8-unit army to defend their settlement with the 8-unit garrison. That should be a good battle. We've got 18 units, so it'll be fairly similar in size. And they, of course, have the fortifications, although we do have a lot of crappy units. So I'm not really sure how well this is going to go. Going to use my spy. Could assassinate a rival. But I think I'd probably rather poison the well. Get some attrition on their units if we're lucky. Come on, Mr. Spy. He's done it. Critical success. What a champ. That helps us out. I should also mention that this campaign is on normal, normal. So normal campaign difficulty, normal battle difficulty. That's what it was locked to. Didn't have any choice about it. So it is going to be a little bit easier than I would like personally, but it's all right. They've got some good units here, some not so good units, so it should be all right. I can only build battering rams for some reason. I'm not sure why I can't build siege towers. There definitely are siege towers in the game, but all I can build is battering rams, which is odd, but we'll build one. And uh, go from there. Not really sure why I can't build siege towers, to be honest. I'm a little bit disappointed. Gonna have to bash that door down and maybe climb some ladders, which won't be good for us. It'll probably make us exhausted, like it does in Warhammer. 
Got a skill point for Menelaus here. Heavy weapon or the War of Athena. Go go for the heavy weapon. Can get some improvements to it to make it a little bit stronger. I've got another skill point. I think I'll go with that one. I could go ahead and do one of these instead, but that sounds good actually. Grants fatigue reduction to all units. I like it. That'll do. Sweet. That'll help us out just that a little bit in this fight. So let's go ahead and get on with it. As you can see from these turns, hopefully, it's like I keep saying, it's a very familiar, usual total war. Nothing too out of the yes, hoarder well hoardenry. Nothing too out of the hoardenry here. Oh god, the AI loves demanding things from you for nothing in return. They just ask for 3,500 food for nothing. Nah, no, mate, you're right. I'll keep my food. Cheers. Got a little gift from Ramesses III of Egypt. I could trade it for stuff. I'll trade it for some bronze. Oh, they didn't like that. Oh no. Oh, what have I done? Oh, I wasn't... I shouldn't have traded his gift there. I think I angered the gods in some way. Oh well. Let's see if we can poison this place again. No. Nope. Can take out this rival spy though. Failed to do that. Never mind. Okay, let's get on with this siege. We should have our battering ram built. We are ready to take Aptera. And once we've done so, we should be able to push on to their last settlement. No problem. They won't have any army there. And this faction, Apteron, will be no more, unfortunately. And as you can see, there's only a couple of directions to attack from in this siege. It's not 360. There are 360 sieges in the game, though. Don't panic. They're in a historical total war. But uh, this one has just got two walls. One here with one gate. It's got some arrow towers. And another wall over here. With another gate. Okay. How to approach this? So, I think breaking my army up again. If I can draw some units away from this main wall where I want to attack, that's going to help us out. If we can put half their army over this side against the main strong force of our army, we'll be better off. So we'll use the battering ram against the gate. We're going to take these peasants, whack them over here. They're going to kind of be a distraction. They're going to force some things to go up on the wall. The arrow towers don't have a ton of range, so that's good. They can sit there and just make the enemy think about them. Just make the enemy worry. We'll take our big boys with the shields. They can charge up first. Our axemen will go behind. Don't want them to get shot up too much. They don't have any shields or protection. Cool. A couple of slingers. They can go up front as well. They're kind of expendable. Got to protect the axemen mainly. They're going to do a lot of the work here. Got a little spear unit we can vanguard deploy. No, we can put them here. We can move them through the trees. Cool. I think that'll do us. Let's go. Battering ram away. Units charge, charge, and as you can see here we've successfully pulled away some of their units to this side of the settlement which is good, that's less strength for us to face head on. Our crappy units will move up, they'll climb the ladders, they're not going to do a lot damage wise but they are going to provide a decent distraction, hopefully allowing us to push in and get a lot of damage done. We're going to leave them back for now though, we're just going to push up with this main force, see what we can do. Their arrow towers, got some slingers up here, some militia, a lot of their units aren't too dangerous, I think we should be okay with this. We've got Menelaus as well of course, who's a beefcake, I'm going to bring up my slingers at a bit of an angle, hopefully they Your can land some shots under attack. on all those slingers on the hills and not get shot up themselves too much, and get some good angles. Hopefully my Axemen don't get shot up too much. All these units stay in put. If they start to move over to the main gate, then I'll probably bring my boys up. But if I can buy some time over there, it'll be good. We'll bring these other little spearmen up this ladder, just as maybe a little bit of a sneaky force. Not that they're going to be that sneaky. They're not invisible or anything. Don't have stalk. Try and hide these out the way a little bit. My main force has outran my battering ram a fair amount, so... Gonna have to stand here taking fire for a little bit, which isn't great. The foe has sighted your hidden units. Hopefully it won't hinder us too much though. They're all still still some are coming away from this wall. Let's move up. Some of these units have fallen back. Let's get up those ladders, start causing a distraction, give them something to worry about. Draw some attention. Quite a lot of skirmishes in there, a lot of archers. And slingers. 
Battering ram's about to arrive. Get my axemen ready. Don't really want to climb the walls unless I absolutely have to. Maybe I'll do it with my slingers. But my axemen, I really don't want them to be tired when they get to melee. Bashing down the wall quickly, quickly. 85%. Let's get ready to move, axemen. Let's go, let's go. Gotta get through that gate. Charge. Charge them, lads. Everyone through. Quickly, quickly. Stop getting shot. Glad they're all taking the gate. They're not going up any stupid ladders. Nice pathfinding, at least. That's a bonus. Sometimes they kind of go weird ways or they try to go up Your ladders. ladders have a foothold on their walls. Just because the doorway gets a bit clogged. We're through. We're attacking. There's one of their heroes. Get into these spears, Axemen. Okay, these little boys are up here. Take this tower for no reason at all. Let's not do that. Let's get down here and start fighting. Those ones are going to be a little bit exhausted. But they can provide a distraction. Let's get Menelaus after the hero. Slingers are up on the wall. Getting them over quick. Cool. Haven't left anyone behind. We're in. We're looking okay. Still got a fair few units pulled away on the other side of the settlement. So that's good. We can push through here nice and easy. Try and take out these units. Isolate them. Get them outnumbered. And this should be a comfortable victory. Your warriors are losing heart. The boys have climbed the wall on this side. Just causing some distractions. Let's get after those missiles. Let's try and get off the walls. Just kind of pursue things. Just be disruptive. Broken their hero nice and quick. He was a ranged hero, so Menelaus beat the crap out of him. Broken these here. Let's push through. Some of you over this side. Spread out, lads. Get them all dead. Looking good. Heart. Looking damn good. Another hero coming over. Alive Menelaus. Let's take these out. Got some Axemen there as well. Lovely. These are doing nothing. Come on, let's look alive. Charge them. So this whole kind of infantry heavy warfare, I do quite enjoy it. I'm not missing cavalry greatly in this. Especially not in sieges, because, you know, don't really use them anyway. But I kind of like it. I like that there's a lot of variety between the infantry, and it's required that you use them kind of correctly if you want to win. There's going to be no big cav charges or magic spells saving you. You might have some of the mythical creatures, I suppose. There are obviously some cavalries that can do that. Bunch of archers over here. Come on, boys. Keep harassing them. Keep messing with them. Are they actually... Oh, good. They actually use doorways again and staircases. Amazing. So in Warhammer, you can just run off the walls anywhere, but in old historical Total Wars, you had to actually find a staircase and run down it to get off walls. Which is what you have to do in this. Thank God. I'm glad that's back in. Because it means you can kind of fortify those little stairways if you're the defender. And it's a lot better. In Warhammer, you can just run up a wall anywhere. It's just a bit weird. But yeah, I'm glad that's back in. For Troy. So yeah, there we go. An overview of Total War Troy campaigns. A few battles. A little bit of campaign gameplay. But what do I really think? How do I really feel about Total War Troy? A lot of people on the battle videos I did a while ago didn't seem that impressed and weren't too fussed. And whenever I've asked my community about how they feel about it, no one really seems too bothered. Although they might be a little bit biased as I mainly have a Warhammer community rather than a historical Total War community. So a little bit of both in there, but most people don't seem too fussed. There's been a lot of complaints about the animations and the collisions and the bugs and all this stuff. And how is it going to be on release? It's only a month away, blah, 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 blah. And that stuff is all fair enough. But there is one thing you have to remember. The last three months of all of our lives haven't really been the same now, have they? We've been in quarantines and lockdowns and everything else. And so has CA. They've had to continue working on this game from home, which I imagine is a very awkward situation for developing a game. Now, that doesn't excuse and forgive everything, of course, but I do think people need to give a bit of leeway for that situation. And you need to remember that when this game is released. It's not going to be completely polished and bug-free on release. Hell, it may even be another Rome 2 situation. Who knows? That could really hurt it, given all the new players they're trying to attract with the Epic deal and giving it away for free. But hey, we'll see how that goes. So let's say there weren't really any bugs and there was lots of polish and all the collisions worked and everything like that. How is the game at the core foundation of its mechanics? Do I like it? 
Simple question, do I like it? Let's start there. Overall, yes I do. I've enjoyed my time playing Troy. However, do I see myself sinking 100 or even 50 hours into Troy? And do I think the game has longevity? No, no I don't. I don't think I'll put that many hours into this and I don't think many other people will and it'll be another Thrones of Britannia situation, potentially. This is definitely far better than Thrones of Britannia in my opinion, but I don't really know what it offers me as a total war game. What's going to make me want to play Troy instead of another total war? Does it have better battles than any other total war? No, no it doesn't. Warhammer, I think, has the best battles of any total war by a fair stretch. But okay, maybe you're not into the fantasy games. Maybe historical only is your thing. Well, I still think I'd rather play Rome 2 for the historical battles. So it doesn't have better battles than any other Total War. What about the campaigns? Does it offer a better campaign than any other Total War game? No, no, I don't think it does. Three Kingdoms did a really good job of bringing the Total War franchise forward in terms of some new ideas and some new ways of doing things, which really made campaigns exciting. Troy has inherited some of those things, but doesn't really do anything itself that's really groundbreaking and new and exciting, or that makes me want to play campaigns more than any other Total War. So if it's not battle superior or campaign superior to other Total Wars, why the hell would you play it? Well, maybe the setting, maybe the historical period is one you're really interested in. Raise your hand if you're really into the Bronze Age and the Troy era. Me neither. I don't think there are that many people that interested in this historical period. I'm sure it's an interesting time, and I'm sure I would find it interesting if I read more into it, but nothing's really grabbing me and making me want to go and research it and find out more, which is what did happen to me when I played Rome 2. Of course, this is all personal taste and personal preference, and this is why I started playing any Total War game. I started with Shogun 2 because I've always had a genuine interest in Japanese culture and Japanese history and Japanese warfare, so naturally I was attracted to that Total War. I don't think many people will be attracted to this Total War because of the Bronze Age and the Troy period. So I think those things could be some big issues for Troy that it's not really doing anything spectacularly well. It's added a few nice things. The map design is some of the best I've seen. I have to say that's pretty awesome. But is that enough with the few other little things that it's doing well to really make it a standout Total War? Probably not, unfortunately. And then there's the weird issue of the game can't seem to decide whether it wants to be a fantasy total war or a historical total war. And it doesn't give you the option of either like Three Kingdoms did. Maybe the Minotaur should be a massive hulking creature rather than just a tall guy in a skull. It seems they tried to cater to the fantasy audience by adding in these single powerful mythical creatures, but didn't want to go all out and displease the historical audience by making them literal physical massive weird creatures. So they kind of met in the middle and tried to please both, but I'm not really sure if it works. But hey, I'm all for experimenting and trying things out. That's how we get anywhere with innovation. But it doesn't really seem like a Total War that's aimed at me, a veteran Total War player. There's nothing new here to excite me. Where's the improvement to the battle AI, the campaign AI even? Where's the four player co-op campaigns or campaigns that have multiplayer kind of worked into them? like Shogun 2 did 10 years ago. Where's the dedication to the multiplayer scene at all? There's never really been a decent multiplayer in any Total War game. There's nothing new for the veteran player like me. That's what I'm getting at. That's the gist of what I'm banging on about. While Total War Troy is a decent Total War game, it's not really aimed at me, I don't think, or us existing Total War players. It's going to be a great first experience for someone who's never played Total War before, which is going to be a lot of people because of the free deal on Epic. But for anyone who's played the older historical titles or who only plays Warhammer, they may take a look at this game. They may try it out for a little bit, but I think they'll inevitably go back to their older preferred Total Wars. And I think I speak for the majority of the Total War veteran community when I say, CA, take back Thrones of Britannia. You can keep Total War Troy and any other stopgap saga title you're planning. Just give us Medieval 3 already. Hell, even remake Medieval 2. Just update the graphics, the controls, the UI. Oh, it'll be glorious. We'll be all over it. Maybe one day, fellas. Maybe one day. For now, we've got Total War Troy coming and it's a fairly decent Total War game. But I don't think it's one that I'm going to put more than a campaign or two into before I go back to another historical Total War or Warhammer. Maybe I'll cover it a bit on the channel, we'll see, not really decided on that yet. 
Let me know what you think though. These have just been my personal opinions on Total War Troy and how I felt from what I've played of the game so far. Of course, this is all pre-release stuff, so things may change, blah, 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 but it's not going to change that much because it's only a month away. No so these are just my thoughts on it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm curious to how people are seeing Total War Troy and whether their opinions may be changing for the better or for the worse, the more they see of the game. So the there we go. Bit of an overview, warriors, bit of gameplay, man. bit of my thoughts. Finishing up this campaign siege, pretty much got it done. Just cleaning up what I have left. I'm very depleted, it's very close. But we are going to win this siege and Menelaus will be able to continue his conquering of this island. Thanks for watching people. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you in the future.